I'm representing MSF mission in Bangladesh. I'm very proud to be a part of that. Uh, the country which is uh, hosting one of the biggest refugee crises in the recent history and where our team is actively engaged in providing the much needed health care. But today in this presentation, I'll be talking about another marginalized population. I'll be presenting the health and working conditions of the patients that we see in our occupational health clinic uh, located in uh, the capital city of Dhaka in Bangladesh. Uh, the city of Dhaka is considered as one of the biggest growing mega cities with a population of 18 million with more of this expansion occurring in the urban slum areas. So what is occupational health? So as highlighted in this slide, it is a branch of medicines which deals with the maintenance of health in the workplace, including the prevention and treatment of disease and injuries. So the key aspect of occupational health is the safety aspect in the workplace, including the prevention. So this concept of occupational health can be applied in any working environment. This slide gives the background information about our project location. Kamrangicha is one of the major slum area uh, in, located in the southern part of Dhaka along the Buriganga River. Officially, the population is estimated to be around 440,000, but we know for sure that with the ever-expanding settlements uh, with more congestions, the population at the moment can be easily has 800,000 in a mere area of four kilometers square. This slum area houses a number of small-scale factories uh, which are engaged in many production activities, such as metal smelting, welting, plastic recycling, manufacturing of car batteries, uh, and production of garments. And until 2017, canneries industry were also located in the neighboring district of Hazaribak. So this is a bit of our project history in the slum area. Since 2014, MSF has been providing uh, the three pillars of medical interventions. Uh, right now, we are providing sexual and reproductive health service with special focus on the adolescents. We are providing uh, medical and the psychosocial uh, care to the survivors of the sexual gender-based violence and intimate partner uh, violence survivors. And the focus of our today's discussion, the occupational health. For here, we implemented a new model of care targeting our activities in the clinic and in the factories. In the clinic, we, uh, we of course, we do the consultation and treatment uh, of the workers seen in our, uh, in our facilities, uh, including the injury care, and we also uh, do the give the tetanus vaccination. And our activities in the factories, we do an active health promotion to our outreach workers. And another important aspect of our or activities in the factory is the assessment of the work hazard. And from time to time, we also organize the TT vaccination uh, campaign in the selected factories. So the reason for our starting the occupational health program, there has been a number of reasons, but uh, we first conducted the first survey in 2013. And the result of the survey shows the very marginalized populations with poor access to healthcare, with high rate of injury and high prevalence of diseases among the factory workers with low coverage of tetanus vaccinations. And uh, this triggered uh, our project interest in working for such marginalized group, uh, especially in a context where safety aspects are very limited and occupational uh, accidents are very common. One of the most notorious accidents was the collapse of five-story building called Rana Plaza in April 2013, which resulted in a death of more than 1,000 workers in a single day. This is considered as one of the biggest accidents in the modern human history. So as a part of the learning process for MSF uh, to implement a new model of care and uh, to review our uh, program, uh, we uh, reviewed the data collected from the factories and from the clinic so today, the objective of this presentation is to share the result of the hazard assessment that was done in the factories with whom MSF has an agreed concern. And secondly, to describe the morbidity patterns, uh, categorizing them into adults and uh, minor group. So this is how we collected the data. First, let's look at our work in the factories. Factory hazard man assessment was done in 2017, last year, by a very special technical position known as industrial hygienist. So we broadly uh, list 26 items 
uh, or prepared the checklist and broadly divided, in, divided them into four broad categories, looking at the general physical safety of the factories, a regulation of control measures, available or protective equipments for the workers, and of course, we also look at the ergonomic working environment. And from the clinic data, we conducted the retrospective analysis of our medical record from the patients seen between 2014 and 2016. Um, and for this, we look at the indicators such as demographic behaviors of the workers, working hours of the patients in our clinic, the presenting morbidities, and uh, we also collected the information on the nutritional status. And now let's go to see the result of our uh, factory hazard assessment. So rough, uh, so eventually uh, we assess 151 factories representing the working condition of 5,000 uh, workers who have an access to our clinic. As you can see from this uh, factory distributions, uh, the factory participating in the assessment were roughly equally split between the metal, garment, plastic, and uh, metal factories. Considering the general physical safety, less than 10% of the factories provide safe drinking water for the workers, and 78% of the factories did not have any provision of soap. This was uh, much more concerning for the factories where workers are engaged in direct exposure to the chemicals. And uh, for the control measures, 94% of the factories assessed failed to label and store chemicals safely, and 95% had moving parts uncovered, thereby exposing more, exposing more challenges for the accidents. And for the protective equipment, as has also observed in our everyday visit to the clinic, almost none had any provision or personal protective equipment in place. There was no eye, ear, dust protection observed. As you can see in this picture, this is the plastic recycling uh, factories. And for the ergonomics, 66% of the metal, plastic, and garment factory did not provide any ergonomic working condition. It was very, uh, very common sight to have a very, uh, the same repetitive uh, work working for a very long duration of time. And 78% of the workers performed tasks above the shoulder level. This again shows that the males of the factories did not have any proper working table. They were increasing more chance for the development of musculoskeletal disorders and uh, more chances for accidents. Now let's look at the medical record, the data that we have collected from our clinic. So in total, 5,198 workers were consulted between 2014 to 2016, roughly representing a key 2% of the adults and 17% of the minors. Uh, and for the median age, uh, among the adult, 27, yeah, uh, median age was 27 years for the adults, whereas for the minors, it was 15 years. And for the both age group, uh, the, uh, in terms of sex distribution, it was majority of them were male. Half of them did not have any uh, history of going to any primary educations. And it's also concerning to see that 22% of the minors and 16% of the adults were actually living inside the factories. And uh, others might be living fine accommodation elsewhere in the slum area, uh, but it was very common to have the workers share one room between 10 to 15 workers staying in a very poor hygienic condition. We also collected information about the betel nut addiction. Addic 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 <laughs> this is a kind of like a stimulant nuts, uh, which is quite common in this community. Uh, we found that 26% of our workers that we consulted in the clinic have this habit of chewing betel nut, but fortunately this number was low uh, look, uh, at the minor group. And for the factory type, which represent the number of patients coming, the, or the factory origin of the patients seen in our clinic. Uh, like for the adults, majority of the workers in our clinic were coming from the leather and tanneries, whereas uh, garment industry employed majority of the minor population. And we also collected the information about the working shifts, dividing them into three main categories. The shift less than 12 hours, uh, the shift which was working for around 12 hours, and those working for more than 12 hour shifts. 
And it is interesting to observe that more than 60% of, uh, of the adults and minors have the 12 hour shift, and almost close to 10% of the cases have more than 12 hour shift. And it was concerning that this number was much more higher for the adults. And this is the morbidity presentation. As you can see, the musculoskeletal disorder was the main complaint seen in our clinic. And if you look at the adult group, uh, besides musculoskeletal disorders, it was gastrointestinal tract and skin, which was quite prevalent among the adult population. For the minors, uh, I mean, for the minors, they have a different presentation. Uh, their skin disorders, uh, ENT disorder, respiratory tract infections, and injuries were much more higher as compared to adults. And this is a very important slide. We, as I mentioned before, like we collected the nutritional uh, indicators of the patients in our clinic. This shows that a very high percentage, almost 22 percentage of the adult workers were underweight. And this number is much more concerning for the minors. 46% uh, of the minors seen were underweight, and 26% of the minors seen in our uh, clinics were severely underweight. And uh, this, of course, like any as a part of any analysis, these are our measure limitations. Our findings or the analysis findings here may represent patterns of morbidity among those who have come to our clinic, and this may not necessarily present the general working population in Kamrangicha. And misclassification of condition or disease may have occurred. And the factories which agreed to participate in the uh, hazard assessment may have uh, different conditions from the, again, the general factory conditions in the slum area. So in conclusion, uh, we can say that this is a new challenging field for MSF. Uh, that also requires a very special expertise position such as occupational health specialists and industrial hygienists, and they are not always easy to find. This analysis clearly document lack of hazard protection and poor working uh, environment in these marginalized populations. And the patterns of morbidity that we saw in this analysis are potentially illustrative of poor working conditions. And as a part of the lesson learned, I think we can conclude that there is a need to improve access to healthcare, uh, including systemic nutritional screening and potential nutritional interventions. Uh, and for any occupational health intervention, I think we clearly establish the fact that uh, there is also need to have an activity in the factories which is the hazard assessment. And uh, again, as a part of occupational health intervention, it's very important that we support impl implementations of interventions that aims at improving the work safety. And lastly, I'd like to acknowledge the MSF team in Kamrangicha, especially uh, Sophie, Imran, Dr. Gabriel, Dr. Rashid, our EPI, uh, Louis and Goody, our industrial hygienist, Gary Bang and Bill, and I also like to appreciate the support that we got from the HQ in both London and in uh, Amsterdam, especially from Grazia, Martin, and Nell Gray, and Raphael. Thank you very much. Thank you.